How many are you excited to be here tonight? As we're going to wrap up the series called Frozen. Uh, first of all, I want to let you know we have the foundation class tonight. It's Faith and Confession. If you're scheduled to go to that class, go follow Pastor Marcus. All right. And if you haven't got an outline tonight, raise your hand. I'm not sure if they already mentioned those. But raise your hand if you didn't get one. Right there's one. All right. Just raise your hand really high in the air. Okay. Like you really do care. Okay, I want to let you guys know, we are doing it up here. You can see something's different. We're doing this. I'm going to teach from up here, and the reason for that is because, you know, for television, we found out that it looks better on the screens from up here than down there. So, anyways, that's why. But you guys look so far away. Come on closer. I won't bite, I promise. <laughs> All right, well, actually, I might nibble a little bit. All right. <laughs> so, anyways, how many of you have been enjoying this series? called Frozen, Overcoming Fear. So let's just pray right now. Father God, we just thank you so much, Father, for your word. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God, to learn more from the, from the word of God. And I thank you, Father God, for causing my tongue to be as a pen of a ready writer, Father. I thank you for captivating the hearts of the listeners. And I thank you that we all purpose not just to be hearers, but doers of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you know that it's only the doer that gets blessed? You know, it's one thing to come to church, which is important, but when you come to church, you got to take what you've learned and go home and do your homework. Amen? you got to go home and begin to practice it. Take the Word of God in every situation and everything you're facing. You know, look to the Word for your answer and what you learned today, what we're learning about fear. We have to activate that in our life. The very first um, lesson we learned... Uh, well, that we were teaching on this part one, it says, live fearless. You know, Psalms 118, verse six, it says, the Lord is on my, my side. What does it say? I will not fear. Second Timothy 1, 7, let's turn there. It's on your outline. We're gonna go on into our new one because if I try to do too much review, we're not gonna have time to get what we need to get to today. But, you know, it says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So what we learned here is that God did not give you and I the spirit of fear. So it's not from God. Amen? It's not from God. And if it's not from God, how many of you know, then you and I have no business with it. And, you know, because fear to a child of God is like contraband. It's like having something that doesn't belong to you. I think last week I brought the hot potatoes. Hot potato, hot potato. Who wants that? You don't want the hot potato of fear. If you see its ugly head, you know, stick up in your life, you see it arising. You know, when you start to feel afraid, when you start feeling symptoms of fear, you know, we have new terms now. We say, I'm stressed or, I'm, you know, I'm this or I'm that. You know, those are fear terms. In case you didn't know, to say you're stressed is, is, is really stressed or I have tension. Those are all fear terms. You know, or somebody says, I'm just a little shy. Did you know shyness is a form of fear? You know, there's all different sizes and shapes to fear. You can have just a little bit of fear where you're just a little timid. You can have just a little bit of fear, you know, or, or you can be, have a panic attack, or you can have full-blown fear. And the thing about it is the enemy studies you, and he studies me, and he tries to see an area that he feels like maybe we would give in to fear. But the minute you sense fear, the minute you sense its ugly head arise, do you know what you're supposed to do? First of all, you recognize it. Then what do you do? You resist it. And then you what? You replace it with the promise from the word of God. And I pray that tonight that we really get this. Father God, I pray again that we really get this. Because this is the difference between life and death and our life and our walk with you. And I just believe that. How many of you by faith right now say, I'm going to get it? I'm going to get it. I'm a quick understanding, and I'm going to get it tonight. Amen? So, um, so we shouldn't even allow a trace of fear in our lives. Fear is a spirit, just like we were learning. God has not given us the spirit of fear. How many of you know we have been given the spirit of faith, it says in 2 Corinthians? The spirit of fear is a very real spirit, and you've got to realize it is a spirit. 
And it's a spirit sent out from the enemy. And that's how the enemy gains access in our life, is through fear. And another thing, when he does what he does with fear, is fear is a tool that he uses to keep you from fulfilling the plan of God for your life. How many of you tonight are going to stand up and say, it's no more fear in my life? You're not going to let the devil stop you from fulfilling the plan of God for your life? We're going to go on and move forward with God tonight. So fear is a spirit, and it's not from God, and it doesn't belong to us. You know, the number one way fear that, that we yield to fear in our life, we're going to learn about it in Job chapter 3. Let's turn to Job chapter 3, verse 25. The Bible says right there, it says, The thing I greatly feared, for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Did you hear that? And I like it in this translation. Um, it says in the God's Word translation, What I fear most overtakes me, and what I dread happens to me. The New Living says, What I always feared has happened to me, and what I dreaded has come true. That's the thing. You know, people, they don't like to hear this verse because they think, you know what? I'm already afraid. I'm, I've already feared, so they just want to throw up the towel, throw in their hands and say, it's too late. But, you know, just because you feel symptoms of being afraid doesn't mean that you have to go ahead and yield to the spirit of fear. Do you hear me? Because the enemy is going to bring symptoms. He's going to make you feel those symptoms of being afraid. But the choice is yours and mine whether we go ahead and yield to the spirit of fear. That's what we've got to get. And the number one way that we yield to fear is right here. For the thing I greatly feared has come unto me. So when you sense that fear coming, you have to stand up and you have to resist it. You can't just leave hidden fears in your life. You can't just put them under the rug, you know, and harbor these fears for a very long time and expect them not to manifest. Because if you just ignore them, instead of going, guess what they're going to be doing? They're going to be growing. So you've got to recognize them. Number one, say recognize them, resist them, and replace them. Say it again. Recognize, resist, and replace. So the principle of fear is what you fear will come to you. Fear is like a magnet that draws the thing you fear to you. So if you don't want something to happen in your life, what do you have to do? You've got to get rid of the fear of it. If you do not want something to happen in your life, what do you have to do? You have to get rid of the fear of it. That's what we have to do. So fear draws destruction, and we found out before that faith draws blessing. And here on your outline, fear is like a magnet. It draws the thing you are fearing to you. And here's the thing. You know, in James 2, I was looking at these scriptures today. Actually, I'm not going to go there yet. Let, let me stick with this. John 10:10. 10, 10, how many of you know it says, the thief comes for three reasons. What is it? To steal, to kill, and destroy. It's the enemy. He is trying to come to steal the quality of your life. He wants you to live your whole life and yield to the spirit of fear. And when you get to the end of your life, realizing that you didn't have to do that. You know, you didn't, you know, God never intended for you and I to experience one day of fear in our life. Did you know that? He did never intended for us to even know what fear felt like. But because of the fall of man, because of the sin in the garden, how many of you know sin produced death and death produced fear? And that is why there's fear all around us. But no matter what's going on around you, did you know you can control what's going on inside of you? You don't have to yield to the spirit of fear, even though it's all around us. Like I said, God never intended for your life to be like that. He intended for you and I to live a life of peace. Do you hear me? With no fear in it, only full of peace. Because how many of you know, in the garden, they did not experience any fear. It was a place of peace, faith, and full of love. Amen? So um, here's the thing. Fear is a perverted form of faith. Fear is a perverted form of faith. It is believing for something bad to happen. Did you know 
Fear is a perverted form of faith. It is believing in the enemy's ability to take you down rather than God's ability to put you over. It's a perverted form of faith. It's like having faith in the devil's ability over God's ability. How many of you know that's a slap in God's face if you say, God, I believe a liar over you. I believe that the devil's lies are more powerful than your promises. How many of you know that's not true? We don't believe that, do we? No, we don't. So, you know, in James 2.17, in the Amplified, it says that faith without action is dead, destitute of power, and inoperative. Did you hear that? Faith without action is dead. And if that's the case, did you know what? Fear without action is dead and inoperative in our life. It's destitute of power. I love that. Don't you, do you understand what we're saying? If faith without action is dead, the opposite of faith is fear. Fear without action is dead. Fear that you don't act upon, that you don't yield to, is going to be dead. I think that's good news tonight. Amen? So um, let's see, where were we here? So that's on your outline. If faith without action is dead, then fear without action is dead. So no matter what's going on around you, you can choose what's going on in you. No matter what's going on around you, you can choose what's going on in you. Let's turn to Romans chapter 8. How many of you know it's important to let your eyes rest upon the word of God? Romans chapter 8 verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. It says right there, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? They are the sons of God. But if you're being led by fear, did you know you are not being led by the Spirit of God? When you are being led by fear, you are going to live a life of bondage. Because how many of you know, we learned last week, fear, say it with me, fear equals bondage. Did you know that? Fear, yes, fear equals bondage. And then there's another, one of my most favorite scriptures about fear is in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, which says that through death, talking about Jesus, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. When you live a life full of fear, you will be, the Bible says, living all your lifetime subject to bondage. And in the Amplified it says, and also that he might deliver and completely set free all those who through the haunting fear of death were held in bondage throughout the whole course of their lives. It says it's a haunting fear that plagues people when they fear death. When you are in fear, you will be held in bondage, the Bible says, throughout the whole course of your life. And this is such a sad thing, knowing people are living their entire lives in bondage, full of fear, when what Jesus came to set us free from that. Jesus came to set you free from fear. So that's something that we shouldn't be yielding to. That's something that we got to take notice. The minute you can sense it, how I many you know you can sense when fear is approaching you? You can sense and you can tell when it's hovering over you. And when it comes and when you sense it, that's when immediately you have to take authority over it. You know, I heard this minister say once, is what one of the most astounding statements. I have ever heard. And he said, I have, he said, you are not free to live until you are no longer afraid to die. Did you hear that? You are not really free to live until you are no longer afraid to die. As a Christian, how many of you know when you die, it only gets better from here, okay? So we should lose the fear of death because fear of death is where every other fear gets its strength. Fear of death is where fear gets its strength. But if you lose the fear of death, then every other fear that you have, you would have had, will have nothing to grab a hold of. Did you hear that? 
If you will no longer be afraid to die, you will really be free to start living your life from that point on. I just think that's awesome. I love that. Amen? Amen. So what's the thing here? We need to get rid of, lose the fear of death, drop it. If we don't want to live our lives full of bondage, then we need to lose the fear of death. And fear of death is being separated from God or separated from, listen to this, or separated from anything or anything or anybody that you love. It's a fear of losing it. Think about it. Think about it. Anything in your life that you may have been dealing with the fear, what is it? It's a fear of losing something or being separated from it. A fear of losing that relationship, a fear of losing that person, and that is what? A fear of death. So what do we need to do? We need tonight to get rid of the fear of death. We need to get rid of it, let it go, think of it. Any fear of death that you may have had in your life, tonight I believe that fear is going to be completely annihilated out of your life so that you can truly begin to live the life that God intended for you and I to live. Amen? So like I said, if another hundred years were to go by, how many of you know you're going to die, I'm going to die, your cat's going to die, your dog's going to die, and even your goldfish. If another hundred years were to go, how many you know? I don't know if a person in here, unless you're in the back and you're like five years old, I'm going to be 58, really, 58? No, 57. I always make myself one year older than I am. I don't know why. I guess I want to prepare myself for it. But even so, less than a hundred years, we're all going to see glory. And how many of you know that's the good thing? Yeah. To be absent in the body to be, is to be present with the Lord. Amen? And that's a great thing. So for a Christian, dying is nothing to fear. You know, I heard this, uh, this missionary, this guy, he was on a mission trip, and this guy put a, a gun to his head and said, I'm going to kill you. You know, I heard the story that one guy says, you can't kill me. I understand using your authority. But this man just said, go ahead. I've been wanting to see Jesus for a long time. Just go ahead. He had no fear of death. And when you're not afraid to die, how many of you know you are free to live? Some people are afraid to walk out of their house. Some people have phobias of germs. I've heard, you know, there's a phobia of, 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 of air, breathing air. That's a bad one. If you can't even breathe air, I think you're in trouble. So, you know, but there's so many phobias that people have. You know, a fear of this, a fear of that. The fear of that, but if you get rid of the fear of dying, because you know, people that are afraid to get in a plane crash, what are they really afraid of? They're afraid of crashing and dying. The people that are afraid of getting a disease, what are they really afraid of? They're afraid of dying. But let's realize it tonight, brother and sister. How many brothers and sisters do I have in the house? Raise your hand really high. You're excited that, that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You know, we're not trying to go early. We're not, you know, cutting our life short. But I'm just trying to let you see that you need to get rid of that fear of death because for the child of God, it only gets better from here on out. Amen? Amen. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And to be in his presence would be a glorious thing. Amen? Amen? So how many of you with me tonight can raise your hand and say, you are no longer afraid to die? Say, I am no longer afraid to die. Say it again. I am no longer afraid to die. Go ahead. Say it again. I am no longer afraid to die, and I am free to live. Free to live. Amen? You are no longer afraid to die, and now you are free to live the life that God wants you to live. You know, I found a scripture in the Bible that says, you know, that, that the devil has been disarmed he has been disarmed. He has, you know, he has been, um, we, we have victory, amen, over the devil and over everything that he would try to do in our lives. I want to share a few very comforting scriptures before we leave tonight, but let me just go ahead and live a, a I mean, give you a few more things before I share the end scriptures with, with you. It's a sad thing, like I said, to live your whole life in bondage and look up and just be a prisoner in your own life. Knowing that Jesus paid such an awesome price for us to live a life of liberty, but that some people are living a life of prison within. 
because they have such fear. You know, some people are afraid to step out. They're afraid that they might step out and do something, and maybe they would fail. But, you know, I like the fact that Peter stepped out of the boat. He stepped on the water, even though he got his eyes on the winds and the waves. But, I mean, you know, he's the only disciple that stepped out of the boat. And I'd rather be known as somebody that steps out and misses it than never stepping out at all because I'm too, too cowardly or too fearful to at least try to please God. How many of you know that, you know, if you have a little child and they're trying to walk and they stumble and they fall, do you go kick them and go, you stupid baby, you can't even walk? How many of you do that? No, you go, oh, look at our baby. They're trying to walk. Do you know God is looking down at you and I? And when we are just trying to please him with everything within us, if you stumble and you fall, at least you tried, amen? You did it with a heart of love to try to please your father. I love that. So let's look here. Um, so like I said, no matter what's going on around you, you can choose what's going on in you. That's a good thing. You know, where you really live is inside of you. No matter, you know, there's a world full of fear. We are living in a world where there is chaos, there is fear. You know, all these statistics that you hear, you know, they, they, are, they are designed to, to produce fear in you. You're listening to the news. You know, if you're listening to something and all it is is trying to bring fear and cause you to be afraid, what do you know you should do? Stop listening to it. You know, if you're doing something that's causing you uh, fear, stop doing it. Stop doing it. Don't watch things on TV. You know, they say, you know, or don't listen to statistics. Don't Google stuff, okay? I know you've been Googling. I Google too sometimes. But it's not good sometimes because you hear all these statistics. But, you know, why can't you be the, the two that it doesn't happen to? Instead of the 150 that it ha does happen to, you and I can stand up and say, we're the ones that it doesn't happen to. Amen? Amen. So anyways, um, let's turn in the Bible to the story of Jairus. You know, let's turn in uh, Luke chapter 8. I think this is a wonderful story here. You know, sometimes... I feel like the enemy will try to bring fear. And sometimes, like Joyce Meyer says, it's false evidence appearing real. Did you hear me? Sometimes it's false evidence appearing real. But sometimes it's a very real fear. Like with J. Iris, that wasn't false evidence appearing real. That was a very real fear. Fear when he heard, you know, your daughter is dead. But false evidence appearing real would be like one time we went to stay in this minister's cabin. And um, it was very nice of him to let us stay in his personal cabin. And when we were there, we decided to go to church one night. And then it was in Tulsa. And on our way home, all these fire trucks were passing us, like one after another. And then I got this thought. It was like, oh, my gosh, I left my curlers on. I said, I am burning down this minister's personal cabin right now as we are sitting here driving. They're passing us. And I'm just telling you, I was hyperventilating. I was about to pass out. And all that was was, you know, a thought that the enemy used. That was false evidence appearing real. So that's what I mean when it's false evidence. But sometimes it's very real fear. But no matter what fear tries to come against you, did you know God said Fear not. He didn't say, you know, I, I know in your situation, you can't help it. It's okay if you fear. No, it was a command. It was not a courtesy. And he would not have said, fear not, if you were not capable of not yielding to that fear. And I love it where in John 14, Jesus says, in 14, 27, he says, my peace I give unto you. Did you know we've got the very peace that Jesus walked in himself He's given it to us as a parting gift. So if Jesus, you know, how many of you know Jesus never had a day of fear one day of his life? He never yielded to fear. He always walked in peace. And then he says that when I leave, you know what? I'm going to give you the very peace that I lived and did life with. So that's the tool that, that God's given us, that Jesus has given us to combat that fear with. Amen? Amen. We need to yield to, peer, to peace and not to fear. You get peer when you try to say peace and fear together. You get peer. But, but we need to yield to peace 
and not to fear. Amen? Amen? We need to yield to that. We need to yield to faith and not fear, peace and not anxiety in our life. But right here, the story of, um, right here, the story of Jairus, what verse is it? Verse 40. It says, and it came to pass when Jesus returned, the, re the people gladly received him, for they were waiting for him. And behold, there came a man, Jairus, and he was the ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down on his feet and besought him. You know what it says? I'm not going to read the whole story, but he said, Jesus, if you come to my house, my daughter will live. Did you hear that? Faith will say how it will turn out ahead of time. And he said, Jairus, if you come, and he said, Jesus, if you come to my house, my daughter will live. Did you know that Jesus said he would go to his house? And on his way, how many of you know about the woman with the issue of blood? You know, and her whole story. And I, like I said, if I was Jairus, I would say, you know, Jesus, you know, she's had this problem for 12 years. But my daughter is on her deathbed. She could die any minute. But you know what? Jesus was not in a hurry. Did you know faith never is frantic, never gets worked up. Never, he's just as calm as they say. What is a cucumber? Is that how you say it? He was very calm. But he said he would go. But did you know? Through all that, did you hear what happened? They were coming, and they said, your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the master anymore. You know, right there at that point, how many of you know, it was very important what happened next. Jesus told Jairus, he said, fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. No, Jairus, you have, how many of you know the thoughts that had to be running through his mind, thinking, you know what? My daughter is dead. They said my daughter is dead. Those words had to be ringing in his head. But you know what? If Jesus, Jesus knew how important it was for Jairus to stay in faith and not in fear. And he goes, Jairus, you focus now. Remember what you told me. You said if I come to your, your house that your daughter shall live. And so right there is where it can be lost or won. And no matter what you're facing, in whatever situation it is that's in your life right now, no matter what it is, no matter what the report that the doctor is telling you, no matter, you know, you know, maybe you lost your job or there's no way it looks like that you're going to make ends meet for the month. You've got to stay focused, amen, on the promises of the word of God instead of the lies of the enemies trying to lie to you about. So right then, this is what Jesus said. He said, be not afraid, only believe. And the Amplified, it says, do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear, only keep on believing. Only keep on believing. You know, in Matthew, Peter was walking Matthew 14, 22, Jesus told them to go into the boat and go to the other side. How many of you know a storm came? And then Jesus was walking on the water. And how many of you know the story? You know, Peter said, Jesus, if that is you, bid me to come. And Jesus, what did Jesus say? He said, come. Did you know that word alone was an enablement for Peter to be able to step out and walk on the water? And did you know fear is unreasonable? Because, you know, Peter stepped out on the water, but in verse 30, it talks about the winds and the waves. And he thought, you know, that he can't walk on the water with those winds and those waves. But how many of you know it's impossible to walk on the water if it's smooth as glass? Did you hear me? But that is how, that is how unreasonable fear is. When it comes against you and if you yield to it, you will find yourself doing unreasonable things. But if you know it, it it's, not, it's, it's a miracle in itself to just walk on the water even if it's calm. How many of you found that out to be true? <laughs> so anyways, um, so Peter acted on his faith and a miracle got him out of a sinking boat and standing on top of everything that was going on around him. Did you know your faith in God will get you out of your sinking boat tonight? And you can walk on everything that's trying to go on around you. But what's going to keep you the victory is what's going to keep you focused is you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the Word of God. Don't do this like Peter did. Jesus wins and wins. Jesus wins and wins. Because you know what? You will begin to sink 
when you do that. And you'll have to call on the mercy of God. And do you know what? Jesus did save him. But you know what he says? Why are you of such little faith? He didn't commend Peter and say, oh, Peter, you walked on the water. Oh, goody, goody, goody. No, he was saying, Peter, you could have kept walking on the water if you wouldn't have looked at the winds and the waves. Amen? So tonight, no matter what you're facing, you've got to keep your eyes on the promises of God. When a fear comes against you, no matter what it is, you know, if a fear is coming against you, you know, that, that you're going under, you're not going to make it, you've got to put your eyes on the promise that my God, supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. When the enemy brings a fear to you that you're going to die of this sickness and disease, you put your eyes on the promise, 1 Peter 2.24. Amen. By his stripes, I am healed. Isaiah 53 says he took it, he bore it, and he carried it for you. Amen. If he gives you a fear that you will never get married and have children, you give him the promise that he, that he will, you, you stand on the promise that he will give you the desires of your heart. And your children will be like olive plants round about your table. Amen? So every fear that there is, every fear that the enemy brings is a challenge against a promise in the word of God. Did you hear what I just said? Every fear that the enemy brings in your life is a challenge against a promise in the word of God. And there is a promise in the word to cover any fear that the enemy tries to bring. And again, God said, fear not. Any time God was getting ready to do something big on the scenes, did you know what he always came with the message of? Fear not. He did it to Moses, he did it to Joshua, he's doing it to you and I today. Through his word, he's saying, fear not. Just like he said to Jairus, fear not, only believe. Did you know you can't mix fear and faith together? Fear and faith together don't work. You have to choose one. You know, there's a scripture, Isaiah 12 too. I will trust and not be afraid. If you're trusting, you're not fearing. Did you hear me? I will say it with me. I will trust and not be afraid. Say it again. I will trust and not be afraid. You know, and then in uh, John 14, 27, where we were reading about where uh, Jesus says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. And then he says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Did you hear that? Jesus said to you and I, he said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be be afraid. So the understood subject here tonight is if your heart is troubled tonight and your heart is afraid, it is your fault for allowing it to get in that predicament. Did you hear that? Because Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In other words, you know, Jesus would not have told us not to let our hearts be troubled and neither let it be afraid if we were not capable of doing that. And you know, in Matthew 24, it talks about when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, what did Jesus say? See to it that you're not troubled. Did you hear that? So it's very important that we have to, like we said, we have to recognize when fear comes, then we gotta do our part to resist it and not let it in, amen, and replace it with a promise from the word of God. So where were we on the outline? You can choose not to fear in a fearful situation. Fear and faith don't mix. When fear comes, you can say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What does it say? I will fear no evil. It's an act of your will. I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So fear is a choice. You know, Psalms 118 verse 6 says, you know, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. You know, I just want to go over in closing a few scriptures that have really brought comfort to my heart. And also, I'm going to show you when fear comes, you know, we've been talking about it. What do you do when fear comes? You have to recognize it, resist it, and replace it. But in Ephesians 4.27, it says to give no place to the devil. Give him no place. 
He's bringing fear. He's trying to get place. He's trying to get an opportunity in your life. But what did Ephesians say? Give no place to the devil. Give him no space, no opportunity to, to exert his influence in your life. And then um, James 4, 7, we all know it says, Submit yourselves unto God. Do what? Resist the devil and he will what? He will flee from you, which means he will run from you, the Bible says, in terror. He will run from you. Philippians 4, 6 says, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, let your request be made known unto God. And it tells you, it goes on to tell you what to think on. Think on the things that are good, lovely, just, and have a good report. How many you know you've got to think about what you're thinking about? You can't be thinking thoughts of fear. You've got to resist those thoughts. Refuse to think about certain things. And then, um, let's see, you've got to catch yourself. If you're trying to, you know, if something's trying to make you afraid, you've got to catch yourself, like we said, and you've got to stop it in its tracks the moment it comes. In Romans 8, 6, it says, To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You know, there's a lot of voices out there that are screaming at you and I, and they're trying to bring fear in our lives. They're trying to make us afraid. But how many of you know you can choose the atmosphere that's around you? When you get home, you put on this music. You keep a, a good atmosphere inside of your heart, like we said, and no matter what's going on on the outside, it's how are you living on the inside? Amen? What are you allowing in and what are you saying no to? And so here's some good scriptures that really help me um, just to relax, you know, in the things of God. It's just Isaiah 41.10. It says, fear not. It says in the Amplified, there is nothing to fear. I love that because God says, why? Because I am with you. Matthew 28, 20 says, Jesus could have said anything as his parting words, but do you know what he said? He says, lo, I am with you always. I love that. He is with us always. And then in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, it says, For he, God himself, has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will not in any degree leave you helpless. I will not relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. I love that. He's with us all the time. Luke 10, 19 says he's given us power and authority over all the work of the enemy. Did you hear that? He's given us power and authority. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Let me close with John 16, 33. I love this. It says Jesus was talking and his disciples were going to leave him. He says, even though you leave me alone, he says, yet I am not alone this is in John 16, 32. He says, because the Father is with me. And he goes, I've told you these things so that in me you might have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulations and trials and distress and frustration. He said, but be of good cheer, take courage, be confident, certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Isn't that good news? That's in John 16. Those scriptures alone, you know, just bring peace. They will bring peace to your heart no matter what situation that you are facing. So like we said, fear is a choice. Refuse to fear and live free. That's your last thing on your outline. Refuse to fear and live free. So right now, I just want to pray a prayer over you right now before we leave. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you that, Father, we've learned your word tonight. And I thank you, Father God, that every person under the sound of my voice that has yielded to fear, I just right now speak to that fear in the name of Jesus. If you've been dealing with fear, I want you to just go ahead and stand right now. To stand to your feet. Be bold. Go ahead. Stand to your feet. If fear has been coming against you, and I just thank you right now, Father God, that the fear that has been coming against every person, the name of Jesus, I speak to that fear, and I command it to go from you right now in Jesus' name. Say it. Say, fear, fear. go from me oh. in Jesus' name. Jesus. Say, I will not yield will not to the yield spirit of fear. Spirit. I thank you I thank that I am free, I am free. 
and I will live the life that you have called me to live. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord, for the peace of God right now, replacing every trace of fear. Peace, I speak peace. The peace of Jesus. Just go ahead and receive it right now. Take a deep breath. Breathe in the peace of God right now. Be at peace. Be at rest. All anxiety is gone. All fear leaves. And be at rest right now. And right before, you know, we're going to have a declaration that we are no longer slaves to fear. But before, I want you to take a look at this. This is our next series. You may be seated. This is going to be a great series, guys, because, you know, the stronger the roots are, the, the, the stronger your life is going to be. You've got to get your roots deep in the Word of God. And we're just going to be talking about that. Hey, ushers, if you'll pass out the invite cards right now, this is very important. This is going to be an important series because, you know, that's what's going to make the difference of you having a strong Christian walk with the Lord is getting strong roots in the Word of God. Amen? All right. So if you'd like to... Um, come to the altar. The altar is open. Or if you'd like to just be at your seat, let's worship God and declare that we are no longer slaves to fear. Amen? Amen. 